What's up, my Madden Rebuild Warriors? My name is David. This is Franchises. Uh, we are an eight-team rebuild, rebuilding eight franchises off one from each division at the same time in the same league. If you're not aware, it's pretty cool. I'm also trying out a new microphone today. Uh, hopefully that sounds good to you. Let's quickly go over to the scores from last week. Just jump right into it. Patrick Mahomes. Another big game. He's just running away with the MVP, I think. Rasheed Rice, Noel Gray, Sky Moore, Tony. They're all just chipping away, scoring every game. What can you do? Their Chiefs are awesome offensively. You know, they're not undefeated or anything. They have a couple losses. They've had some bad games. But, uh, you know, this one was closer than most. Devontae Adams having a really solid season. So, for the Thursday night game, 28-24, recommend watching that one. The Pittsburgh Steelers absolutely destroying the Jets. The Jets are done. Kenny Pickett got three touchdowns. Derrick Henry and Zach Moss combined for 120 yards and a touchdown. Pat Fryermuth, steady Eddie for them. Michael Thomas catching his one touchdown every once in a while, along with Deontay Johnson. George Pickens has been picking it up coming down the stretch here. TJ Watts, TJ Watt. So, who knows? The Steelers are going to make it back to 500 because that's what Mike Tomlin does. But there you go. Uh, really disappointing result here. Our Cincinnati Bengals go down to the Cleveland Browns in a revenge game at home. Joe Burrow throwing four interceptions. And just not what you would hope. Jamar Chase, uh, he needs to get going again. He's falling off here. You know, and the, the crappy part about it is, I'll show you here. It was against Jameis Winston. Yeah, man. Um, Jerry Judy, Elijah M uh, Moore, uh, the rookie, Mika Igbuka. And they all scored. Taken away from David Njoku, but I thought... The Browns got their backup, you know, win the week before against the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, and their defense had otherwise. So the Browns remain an issue for Joe Burrow, and they might. I was definitely going to change their playbook next season, but I don't know, man. Another bad game. They might be uh, might be changing their, their playbook soon. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Go to our Carolina Panthers who put the beat down on them. Bryce Young. You know, there's a couple turnovers. Uh, no. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I watched this one and I'm trying to remember. But there's some shorter fields for Bryce Young. So, that's why his yards are down. But he's still got three touchdowns. And that was another reason. They ran the ball like hell. Especially Bryce Young. Big, like a 60 something yard rushing touchdown. Jermaine Burton, he got in the box. Mingo, Terrace Marshall, need all these guys to score. Uh, Cole Harmon might be getting moved out of. He might be getting moved out. He's falling off a little bit here. But Mingo and Marshall are fine in their spots. We'll talk about that playbook more. Brian Burns earned him a defensive NFC Defensive Player of the Week with his four sacks. Derek Brown another two and a half. So we got we got it after it, man. So good for us there getting the win. 35-13. I still have hope for them to get over 500. Uh, I was surprised by this one. The Colts going down to the Lions. Golf wasn't great. Uh, golf is not great. 
you know, I, I believe, and I still believe, that the Colts are a great team. They're playing very well. Anthony Richardson's having a great sophomore season. And they just uh, didn't execute when needed to get the win here. So, there you go. There's a result from that one. Here's a good one. Our Tennessee Titans, a franchise-focused team. Jaden Daniels. I... I think he's the better rookie. I mean, his team's just playing the best. He's got, what, almost 300 yards passing, three touchdowns, 45 yards rushing and a touchdown. Najee Harris goes over 150. T. Higgins had a good game. Shea caught two touchdowns. Najee Harris had a really good game, actually. Stackhouse, the rookie getting two and a half sacks. Landry... B.J. Hill, Arden Key got a half sack. Caleb Farley, uh, Sean Murphy bunting. I believe it's Sean Murphy bunting that's kind of moving up the list here. Defensive backs. So Caleb Farley's had a good season here too. So good on our Tennessee Titans getting the win there. And then a really unexpected result here was our New England Patriots franchise focus team. Putting it on the Bills. Drake May gets it going for once. 272 and four touchdowns. He does have the one interception. That's okay. Uh, we're getting his legs going, which is good. Using some of that athleticism. Hunter Henry is having a great season. He's really up there and catches. His yards are a little bit down, but he's just a nice security blanket. Darnell Mooney's uh, very close to going over 1,000 yards. He had two touchdowns. Parker's been productive when we put him in. Now, you know, that only 13 yards, but he did have a touchdown. So he does do some things when he's out there. Juju Smith-Schuster sucks. And uh, he might be getting switched out here for Demario Douglas because that's not uh, – two catches isn't enough. But, hey, uh, Jaheim Bell getting 30 yards. That's nice from him. Uh, we're one game out of 500, and it'd be nice to see us get the back 500 and, you know, really, really, really put uh, put it on the teams ahead of us for that last wild card spot, see if we can catch them. Uh, great win here. Gutty win for our Arizona Cardinals. Another, another game where, you know, shorter fields, two interceptions for, for love. Kyler Murray, uh, at least two touchdowns in, like, I don't know how many games. Okay, Makers got in the box. A little bit on the down rushing yards for uh, Kyler Murray. Trey McBride got in there. So, you know, sometimes you don't need the stats. You just need the win. It's the only stat you need. Mondon's having a great season as a rookie linebacker. Chris Abrams Draney's moving up the list there. So good win there on the road for our Cardinals in Green Bay. Uh, I believe we call this one the Giants putting it on the Seahawks on the road. Saquon Barkley at a touchdown. And uh, I believe they I believe there was two pick sixes thrown. Yes. Banks and Belton. Two pick sixes. This was a heartbreaker. Uh, Mac Jones destroying our LA Chargers secondary. Quitlin Sutton, another huge game. Zach Ertz caught two touchdowns. Mims with a touchdown. So Mims and Sutton are having like great, great seasons here towards the end. Um, I'll talk about the Broncos in a second. I looked at the Broncos' record after this game because I, I wanted to see what playbook they have. They don't have Sean Payton anymore. They're using the Raiders' playbook. Uh, Justin Herbert was bad. Three interceptions. I mean, all right, he went over 400 yards and three touchdowns out of necessity from trailing. But, you know, did it get it done? Quentin Johnson's really having a... Uh, a nice season here. Mike Williams catches his two touchdowns. Palmer's 
And Stover is kind of like their check down guys, uh, which takes away from Travion Henderson catching anything, which, you know, but Henderson produces in the run game. Uh, if he's not getting going over 100 yards, he's probably scoring a touchdown. Kenneth Murray Jr. is just a sack machine as a middle linebacker, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, but back to the Broncos real quick. We're going to go over them. You know, I'm going to do something new this week where I do a little talk in between in, before every game. And the Broncos are on like a really nice winning, you know, run here of wins. They, they lost last week, which I thought they would win to the Raiders, but they're like seven and two since Mac Jones came over. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so this was for the division, and the Saints pulled out. Will Levis one and one. You know. Go watch this game if you want. I know we have a uh, Saints fan in the building. And uh, the Saints are now in the driver's seat for the division. This was frustrating. Three interceptions from Justin Fields, our franchise focus team, the Washington Commanders. I mean, it looked like we were going to run all over the the Cowboys, a couple big runs by Jalen Warren, but, you know, a couple big ones and too many, you know, not too many one-yard, two-yard runs mixed in. Uh, we just didn't have it. Cowboys killed us. Brandon Cooks, CeeDee Lamb, Tony Pollard, six touchdowns from Dak Prescott. It was not, you know, this was the... This is our commander's shot at winning the division, and um, they blew it. Could not beat the Cowboys this year. Um, Sunday Night Football was a rematch of the Super Bowl from our past season. And, um, I mean, it's good for the Eagles that they lost because it helps with draft positioning. But I really thought the uh, Eagles were going to get – the win here, a you know, low scoring game, revenge game. I really thought the Eagles were going to get it, but they didn't. And then our Chicago Bears, I, I kind of knew this result was going to happen on Monday Night Football. You know, he just kind of went the stats. So I, I'm happy that Caleb didn't throw any picks. He didn't go over 200 yards, which kind of sucks. They held our running game in check. Uh, you know, Marvin Harrison having a nice rookie year. He should be. He's such a high pick. Cole Komet got in the box. You know, but our defense was not good. The 49ers. Brock Purdy. You know, we held Christian McCaffrey in check in the run game, but Debo's back. Ayuk's Ayuk, and then just kind of feeding these guys down here. So, unfortunate, man. Unfortunate. But the Bears are still in the lead by a couple games in their division. Let's go to the stats. Talk about some of the, the leaders real quick. Uh, we just did a big video on stats, but we try to keep you up to date as we go. Patrick Mahomes, almost 4,000 yards. Stafford's right behind him. Herbert, Baker. This playbook, this uh, Josh McDaniels playbook for the Raiders, I think it's got some potential to be really good. Now, if you remember two years ago, the Raiders was my favorite uh, quick sim playbook. Like, look at Patrick Mahomes, man. <laughs> Almost 10 more touchdowns than Herbert. You know, Herbert's having a real nice stretch here. Even though they just lost, he's thrown at least three touchdowns in, like, four straight games. Prescott's catching up. You know, some of the usual names, but no, one, no one's Mahomes, man. He's got the playbook. He's got the overall. He's got everything. Jonathan Taylor, Caffrey. 
and Damian Pierce are now 1,000, uh, all over 1,000 yards. Our J.K. Dobbins right there. So is Travion Henderson. I believe they will go with over these uh, out injury. But Henderson leads in touchdowns. Receiving wise, Hunter Henry, he's leading the league in receptions now, just past Terrace Marshall and John Domingo, who are um, in the same t- on the same team in the same playbook. They get fed, man. Those two guys get fed in the run and shoot playbook. We'll talk about that more in a separate video. Terrace Marshall, I mean, these two are the same guy. Pretty much. Same school. Oh, same weight. Uh, weight and height. Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams. Diggs. Katarius, Katarius, Tony. Wow. No longer cadavers, Tony. Defensively, Solos goes to Jordan Brooks and Matt Milano. Total tackles. Alu Khan, I think that's how I heard his name. Look, at, but him and Devin Lloyd on the same team, both. That's ridiculous. Quay Walker, Drew Tranquil, tackles for loss. Jonathan Allen's a beast. Only five sacks, forty-five tackles for loss. That is a beast right there. And our Derek Brown is leading the league in sacks. How about that? BJ Ojolari. Uh, I was watching a C4 video rebuild of the Cardinals, and he was talking about how BJ Ojolari became like a, a sack machine for him. So I guess uh, BJ Ojolari plays in good in the Sims. White and Gilmore having just unbelievable years. Jair Alexander, Pertain. Now we're, I think we're. There you go, Chris Abrams Draney. He's got four, the rookie. So there's a quick look at stats. Best offense. Chiefs, Chargers, Rams, Ravens, Colts. Most passing yards, Chiefs, Rams, Chargers, Bengals, Panthers. Dolphins, most rush yards, Colts, Cardinals, Falcons, same playbook. Ravens, all three have the same playbook. Commanders, same playbook as the Colts. So it's all about you. Leading the league in rushing is all about getting rushing out of your uh, your uh, quarterback. Then the Chiefs lead the league in points the Cowboys and have now caught up with them Chargers are creeping up on them Dolphins 49ers all the all the usual names here Chiefs of course have the most passing touchdowns Chargers Cowboys Dolphins 49ers most rushing the Ravens Colts Chargers it's all about Travion Henderson Most first downs. I got a cat jumping on me. Chiefs, Chargers, Colts, Bills. How about defense? The best defense is the Colts, followed by the Bengals, the 49ers, the Buccaneers. It's crazy about the Colts. Only giving up, giving up the least amount of yards. Um... Least amount of passing yards, them and the Bengals, the Seahawks. Least amount of rushing yards, the Rams, Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins is because, in my opinion, they give up so much passing yards. Buccaneers, Giants. It's giving up the least amount of points, the 49ers, of course, the Buccaneers, Cowboys, Browns, Bengals. Most sacks are Panthers and the Browns, Eagles, Buccaneers, Seahawks. Wow, the Seahawks? That's crazy. Most interceptions, the Cowboys and the Bills. 
followed by the Broncos, Titans. Let's take a look at the playoff picture real quick. Has anything changed? Titans are, are still in there, and you got the Browns. So, um, man, our Bengals are really hurting here of getting in the playoffs, man. Uh, our Chargers are a wild card team, and our Titans. None of these teams are leading the division yet. You know, can they get in there? Eh, maybe. Uh, 49ers are still number one seed. LA. So, same here. Um, our Cardinals and our Commanders are... I, I don't even know if there's another team that really has... A chance of making this last wild card spot yet. So, we got three teams on this side. Hopefully we can get another team in the playoff picture as we get down, down the wire here. Injuries. Bears are clean. Bengals. Still missing Cap. Oh, Cap is not going to be back for the rest of the season. Jackson's still not back. Orlando Brown's still not back. They're still playing without the right side of the line. That's hurting them. Bills are clean. Broncos. Still without Byron Murphy, Cushion Barry. So they got some problems on their offensive line. Deshaun Watson's out for the season. You should, you know, if you've been following, you should know that. Tomlinson's still out. Buccaneers, White's still out. Paris Johnson still is now out for the Cardinals. JT Woods is still out, and we just lost Tui to Pelutu. Chiefs are clean, Colts are clean, Commanders are clean, Cowboys, Chauncey Golston, Dolphins are clean, Eagles now lost Myelotta, Falcons are clean, 49ers are clean, Giants, Burford, Jags are clean, Jets, two backup tight ends, Lions are clean, Packers are clean, Panthers, our Panthers have nobody out. Uh, our Patriots just lost uh, to Vi. Raiders don't have anybody out. Kyron Williams is out for the season. Other than that, they're healthy. Ravens don't have anybody. Saints don't have anybody. Seahawks, Charbonnet's out for the season. But other than that, they're good. They lost their kicker in uh, Pittsburgh. Tart's still out for the Texans. Titans, our Titans are good. And so are the Vikings. So those are the injuries i hope this sounded well stick around because we're going to go over uh, a preview of week 14 in the schedule all right it's awards time dak prescott got nfc offensive player of the week and then our brian burns got nfc defensive player of the week with four sacks one forced fumble mac jones leading the charging broncos Five passing touchdowns over our L.A. Chargers. What an upset that was. And then speaking of uh, another upset, kind of, uh, the Browns and Grant Delpit, who got offensive or uh, defensive player of the week, beat our Bengals. Now let's look at some upgrades we saw. Boye Mafe, he went up to Superstar. Paulson Debo up to Superstar. And then Reed Blankenship is now a star development player. Looking at a quick overview of the schedule and some of the top performers for the season. Moving to a broader view of the schedule. Running through here. Now let's get to every game individually. Starting with a Thursday night football game in Atlanta. The Dallas Cowboys travels to Atlanta. Uh, the Cowboys have a nice schedule here to finish the year, probably. Uh, I don't see Atlanta on a short week, even though they're home, getting a win here against the mighty Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys will become the first 10-win team of the season. 
and the Atlanta Falcons will still be uh, in the hunt for the number one overall pick in the draft. Then the first one o'clock game on Sunday is our Chicago Bears home against the Detroit Lions. Now I worry here that we're going to... Everyone in this division is under 500, so things could get crazy here. You know, they still have our Bears still have a rookie quarterback, and the Lions are always dangerous. You never know what Lions team is going to show up. So I'm uh, a little worried about this. And then the next game, hopefully, our LA Chargers can get revenge for our Cincinnati Bengals in um, Cleveland against the Browns. The Chargers and the Chiefs are tied for the division, but I could really see seating being thrown in a monkey wrench if the Chargers lose here. And you got like a bunch of nine or four teams here, so scary spot here for our LA Chargers. I'm going to take the Ravens here. They go to nine and four, keep pace with the Browns, but you know. Always said Mike Tomlin's a 500 ball club guy. I've ever seen one. You know he's really good at you know getting the most out of his team. So could they get a sneaky win here? I I don't think so. I think uh, Baltimore and the Browns are chasing each other for the division, which is really hurting our Bengals. So give me um, the Ravens there. And speaking of the Bengals, you know Joe Burrow. His kryptonite is the Cleveland Browns, but he is also a big game hunter. And I see Joe Burrow rebounding here after throwing four interceptions last week, throwing four touchdowns this week. And, uh, he, you know, he, he gives it to Mahomes, man. This is going to be a great game. This is probably one of the best games every year. Bengals over the Chiefs. And then a tough spot here. Uh, I think Miami is looking to become the second 10-win team uh, on the season. And that's a tough spot for our our Arizona Cardinals. Back-to-back row games. Now you're down in Miami against a really good team. I mean, our our Cardinals are playing well, but I just don't think this is the right spot for them. So give me Miami here um, in a good game. And then... This is an interesting game here. Indy, Indy could lose this because that would really throw a wrench into wild card contention that moves the Jags up a spot. Yeah, this AFC wild card uh, race is going to get interesting. This last spot for this last wild card team, and I think the Jags do that with a win at home, and uh, that also kind of plays with. Uh, Who's going to win that division, maybe? Now, I, I'm i picking the Vikings here because I think the Bears lose, the Lions win, and then the Vikings win. This this race isn't over, in my opinion, uh, for the Bears. But if both the Vikings, the Packers, and the Lions lose, then, yeah, it's over. But I, think, I actually think all three of those teams – are going to win and the Bears are going to lose. So uh, Seattle's done. Seattle's fighting for that uh, last spot. Uh, the uh, top draft picks, though. I Give me Denver here. Denver's on a roll. Jets suck. Denver's home. Um, I think Denver can creep up into that last wild card spot here. They I looked at their schedule. They can rattle off a, like four more wins in a row, get over 500. Uh, they have a the last two games are tough, but uh, Denver could be a contender for that last wild card spot. And then the Tennessee Titans, tough spot for them on the road. I mean, I know Houston's five and seven, but uh, I don't know, man. That's uh, that's tough. Houston could always win. They're still Houston despite that record, but uh, and with the Colts probably probably losing, I think Tennessee loses here. But uh, it'd be great if they won because then they'd probably be uh, contending, you know, if not in first place in the division. Uh, Hopefully this is a bounce back spot for our Washington Commanders. Doesn't matter 
not really. There's really no race right now for anybody for the last spot or the last two spots, even that of the wild card. So, I mean, Commanders kind of have that locked up right now. So they could afford to lose maybe, but I don't want to see it. But uh, give me the Commanders here at home. And I think this is a... All right, so the Giants defense is tough. But I think this is a great spot for the Panthers, our Panthers, that we're rebuilding to get two wins in a row and inch their way back up to 500. 500. I'm really just trying to get this Carolina Panthers back up to a a respectable record close to 500. And I think think they can do that in New York because their uh, offense is not good. Good spot here. I like the Rams, actually. I don't know. I don't know if I like the Rams. Uh, it doesn't really... Uh, same thing. Rams are a wild card team. They're 7-5. to five. There's no one really else putting pressure on them, so they don't need to win. And we can see another 10-win team here in the NFL. And uh, I think that is the San Francisco 49ers after they just demolished our Bears. Uh, this is a pretty good game. I think the Rams give them a game, but the... 49ers pulled out, and then uh, I'm picking the Green Bay Packers here to win at home. And then that makes that division in the uh, NFC South just that more crazy with a 6-7 and seven team, 6-7 six, seven, six and seven win team uh, leading the division. You know, and then if Buccaneers win, they put some back in contention for first in that division. So give me the Packers here. The Packers get back into division talks. And that also puts Buccaneers back in division talks. So we'll see. Uh, That's it. That's it for the podcast. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. Hopefully I caught you up on everything you need to know. What's going to happen. What's what's happened. And we go from there. Um, Yeah, so... Tell me who you think is going to win. Tell me who you think the big performances are. Who's going to make the playoffs? Who are you worried about? Who do you think we haven't uh, talked about that could sneak up into the playoffs? So, got everything laid out for you. You can uh, figure, you know, out, you know, who's going to make the playoffs and uh, who's going to win the MVP and all that stuff. So, love your comments. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.